Hi there and welcome to another video. Thanks for joining me. And in case you haven't come across my channel before, my name's Tim and I'm an amateur radio operator down on the south coast of the UK. Now, I've thought of an antenna design that I think could be a bit of a winner. Let's see what you think. It's called an L-shaped doublet. Now, people often run L-shaped dipoles, basically an antenna, funny enough, in the shape of an L, uh, fed in the centre with coax. But I thought, why not try this design uh, with it as a doublet? Now, this is purely semantics. Doublet is basically uh, usually referred to these days as a dipole, fed in the centre, not with lad uh, not not with coax, I should say, but with ladder line. Uh, usually a um, sort of commercial 300 or 450 ohm ladder line, doesn't matter which one you use really. And that goes into a ballon or straight into an ATU, for example. And it can co cope with tuning a wide variety of bands. Anyway, let me show you the layout of this proposed antenna I've got, the one which I'm going to try over the next few days. Let's have a look. Uh, so the antenna itself then is basically designed to be used from 40 through 10 meters. Now both legs are going to be around 7.2 meters long. That's something around 24 feet for those running in old fashioned measurements. Now the top of the antenna will be somewhere near the top of a 12 meter fiberglass pole, uh, about 11 meters above ground. So therefore the bottom of that vertical part of the antenna will be just under four meters off the ground. And then the bottom part of it, the other leg of the dipole, will sort of gently slope down to around a meter above ground, okay? Now, what this means is that uh, you've got to be careful, of course, to try and make sure that not too many people come into contact or anyone doesn't come into contact with the end of that bottom leg, because that's got uh, relatively high voltages on the end of it. If you use insulated wire, you'll uh, be slightly safer. Now, the antennas, we go back with the diagram, will tell you that it's been fed in the middle with window line or ladder line, whatever you want to call it, 300 or 450 ohm typically. Now, you've got a couple of options here with this. You can either feed it directly to a ballon, a one-to-one -one current ballon, for example, and a very short bit of coax into the ATU. Or, as I'm going to try and do, and I'm not sure whether this is going to work or not, but it's worth a go, I'm going to put it directly into a remote ATU. And going back to the diagram, as we can see there, I'm going to put the ATU probably on the uh, on the roof of the car. All right, I'll operate this as a portable antenna. Now the uh, the uh, ATU I've been using is a MAT40, MAT40. It's actually designed as a um, long wire remote tuner. Um, but my idea is to feed one of those legs of the uh, ladder line into the uh, into the hot side where the long wire would usually go, and then the other one into the ground side, the ground lug, and then uh, basically let the tuner do the work. And the good thing about this tuner is it can cope with a wide range of impedances because at the end of that ladder line, depending on which band you use, basically you're going to have a different impedance to deal with each time. And if your tuner can cope with a wide range of impedances from as low as say four or five ohms up to maybe 1500 ohms, for example, then you've got a much better chance of coping with a wide range of frequencies and get as many of these bands tunable as possible. And the aim here is to get really uh, 40 through 10 meters. So hopefully six or seven bands. So what I've done as is my, uh, my, my want, I suppose, is use a bit of modeling to see well, what sort of results we can expect in this antenna. So I'll start with 40 meters and go up to 10 meters very quickly and show you what could well be the case. And by the way, what, before we do that, one good thing about this antenna, of course, is that the uh, both legs are, okay, appreciably shorter than a half wave on 40. They're, they're about three quarters the size of a of a half wave on, uh, on 40 meters. And that's kind of where you want to set the minimum length of the antenna really to be fairly sort of uh, fairly efficient, if you like. But the good thing is you can fit this in a fairly small space because you only need probably around eight or nine meters, 25 to 28 feet or so of horizontal space to put this antenna in. Whereas normally, of course, with a half wave dipole on 40 meters, you need, a, you need at least double that, wouldn't you? Even with an inverted V. Anyway, let's have a look at each band. So we'll start off then with 40 meters. All right, so 40 meters then. And I've looked at the antenna in terms of both uh, five and 75 degrees elevation. So um, with five degrees takeoff, it's a very nice low angle for possibly for some DX contacts maybe. So uh, a quarter way vertical, for example, mounted on the ground with a few radials underneath will give you typically around minus five and a half to minus six dBi. That's kind of the figure to think about here. All right, and that's usually an omnidirectional pattern as well. So if you laid out, say, eight quarter wave radials on the ground, 
and you put that quarter wave up for 40 meters, it'll be about nine and a half to 10 meters high, you'll get that omnidirectional pattern pretty much anyway, of around minus five and a half to minus six dBi on sort of average ground, okay? So if we go back to this then, let's see what this antenna is like at five degrees. Now, because we've got that uh, leg, basically one leg of the dipole uh, coming out horizontally and one vertically, there will be a bias a little bit uh, in the direction of that slope. So you can see here on the left-hand side, we've got minus 5.2 dBi. That's the direction that the horizontal leg is traveling towards. Okay, so it's that direction. And off the back of that, if you like, as we can see going back to the diagram, we've got minus 8.2 dBi. So, you know, we're slightly better perhaps than a quarter wave on one side and a couple of dB down on the other. Not a huge deal breaker. Now, let's say, for example, like lots of people do, you want to work fairly close in stuff around the UK within sort of a thousand miles or so. And that's what you want to do. So you want like some good high angle takeoff here around 75, 80 degrees is a good way to look at it. And that will give you sort of one hop back down and you'll be nice and strong to chat to your friends and to local contacts sort of around two to 300 miles away. Well, let's have a look then. We'll look at uh, modeling on 40 meters at 75 degrees. And as we can see here, look, uh, the important thing to bear in mind is it's fairly now a, a non-directional antenna, as we can see on the left hand side, that round uh, sort of azimuth pattern there. Now, uh, three things in red. Now, the first thing is the average sort of result for this antenna at 75 degrees with the high angle stuff is minus 2.2 dBi. So remember that, minus 2.2. Now, if we compare that to the quarter wave, a quarter wave vertical will give you about minus 10 dBi. So this antenna will be around at about an S unit better, probably, I would say, than a quarter wave vertical at those high angles compared to a half wave sort of inverted v dipole fairly low to the ground say the apex is about 25 feet off the ground seven or eight meters something like that as we can see back on the diagram we can get seven dbi so this antenna for the high angle stuff is about halfway between what a quarter wave vertical would be and what your half wave inverted v dipole would be if you're say running portable or something okay so it's kind of a halfway house really it's a reasonable compromise. If you think about the lack of horizontal space you need for it, I think it's not a bad antenna at all. It will certainly be a lot better for you uh, on these high angles, certainly, than, say, a really short base-loaded vertical would be if you're running portable. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Uh, let's have a look at the other bands quickly then, because obviously we're, we're looking to work more than 40 metres. Let's look at 20 metres. And for 20, we're looking just at five degrees elevation. Remember, our quarter wave will be about minus five and a half, minus six. Well, in the direction of the slope again, the direction of the radial or the, or the bottom leg of the dipole, if you like, we're minus 4.3, minus 7.3 on the other side and bits in between, sort of in between those two. So again, we're kind of in the ballpark, in fact, a bit better in one direction than a quarter wave vertical. Let's look at 70 metres. At 70 metres, we're minus 3.7 compared to minus 7.3. So in fact, we're getting slightly stronger on that higher band in the direction of the uh, direction of that bottom leg. If we look at 15 meters, 15 meters were minus 2.3 and minus 4.6 at the worst. So in fact, 15, it's kind of a half wave almost this antenna. So really, it's doing very, very well now for us. It'd be a nice antenna on 15, I think. On 12 metres, again, in this nice low angle takeoff, at the worst of the back of the slope, if you like, the back of that uh, lower leg with minus 5.1 on the right. You'll notice then that the strongest part of the antenna isn't actually directly opposite, but off the two sides. So we've got like the uh, the vertical bit, we've got the horizontal bit. It's just either side of that horizontal bit that we're getting the, the strongest sort of uh, current here now, minus 2.2 dBi, which is very good indeed. And finally, on 10 metres, similar, now up to minus 1.7 dBi of the strongest bits. Appreciably, though, a very good antenna, I think. Small space. Uh, the ladder line will take the strain for the SWR. You'll find is you'll find very high SWR on some bands, but the ladder line will cope with it. You'll get well under uh, a dB, dB of loss on that ladder line. You probably only need something like about four or four meters or so of ladder line, something like that. Probably less than that to run into the tuner. 
You may find that on some bands you won't get a match. Just add a bit of Ladderline onto it and see if that brings it in. Because sometimes doublets will depend on the combination of the length of the doublet, uh, the overall antenna, you know, in this case the L, but also the length of the ladder line as well. But don't get too unhappy about that. Uh, you should still be able to get a tune on most, if not all, of these bands, okay? So I think this is a good antenna, and I can't wait to give this a try. I really can't. One thing I will be doing is choking the coax coming from the tuner to make sure there isn't any common mode coming back. But to be honest with you, with a bit of luck and a bit of... Uh, well, let's hope the propagation gods are with us. I'll be able to give this antenna a bit of a go over the next few days and uh, report back into you to see how well it's done. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope that's given you some ideas for running portable on a fairly small sort of space. And if you've got a small space at home, then maybe this is an antenna you might want to try out. Let me know how you get on. Uh, there'll be another video coming up over there and a chance to subscribe over there. Great to have you with me. We'll catch you again for another one. 7-3 from the south coast of the UK. Bye for now.